Hey guys, Matt LaRosier here with Farmers Policy Coalition bringing you another weekly update just to make sure you have all the latest information on everything affecting your right to keep and bear arms. First up this week, we may have some shady action coming from the ATF. We got some intel that our favorite bureau may be trying to quietly change their position on pistol braces. Such a change threatens to render the mere possession of millions of firearms a felony. Now, I know you might have some questions about what I just said there. I mean, you might be thinking, Matt, it's just the brace, though. Well, you gotta take a step back and think about it. What happens when you put a stock on a pistol under the Gun Control Act? What does that become? That's right, legal magic happens and poof, that becomes a regulated item. And now it's unregistered, and that's bad news. Now, this wouldn't be the first time the ATF did something suspect like that. After all, they were responsible for the pump stock ban when it became politically expedient for President Trump. Just like with bump stocks and other products, the ATF has frequently assured gun owners that they are legal to possess, and gun owners have taken the government at its word. Now, if all of this is true, it shows that the ATF is once again putting its policy preferences above the liberty, the interests of the people, our constitution, and the rule of law. No one deserves to be imprisoned for taking the government at its word. We'd also like to give a shout out to Congressman Matt Gates. He was one of the first people to break news on this issue and call attendant to it. He's sending a letter demanding that ATF stops diddling with our liberty. We've got a press release about this on our website. You can read it at fpcnews.org. Rest assured, we're going to be following this one very closely. Next, we finally see some justice in Jackson, Mississippi, where a federal judge issued an order that explained what Mayor Lumumba already should have known. The constitutional right to bear arms isn't something you can just turn off, especially during an emergency. In addition to the judge's order, the city of Jackson acknowledged that their actions were wrong and agreed to refrain from trying to ban gun possession in the future. Let's just hope that they've learned something. In Virginia, somebody's actual grandma is filing suit against the state government, challenging the state's new law which would ration firearms purchases. Valerie Trojan, who is described in the suit as a wife, a mother, and a grandmother, intends to buy multiple firearms this summer, but now cannot due to Virginia's new law. Long story short, the law says you can only buy one handgun every 30 days. The suit contends that the law violates the state constitution and that the government can't just limit the number of times you can exercise your rights. Best of luck, Valerie. We'll be keeping an eye on this case. In Chicago, like many other major cities right now, the relationship between police and the people is unprecedented, with police and emergency responders unable to provide assistance when it's requested. A disturbing video has surfaced on Twitter containing an audio clip of some CPD radio chatter. One of the people talking, who I assume is the dispatcher, seems to explain that a gang shootout is occurring. Two officers respond, and what do they say? Let them do it. Let it be. This is what we were talking about. This kind of stuff is the perfect example of why our right to keep and bear arms is so important. It's not for a hunting expedition. It's so we don't have to depend on others should the unthinkable happen. Of course, if Illinois and city politicians would get out of the way, the good people of Chicago would be able to take up arms to defend their homes and keep themselves safe. But people like Chicago Mayor Lightfoot and the Illinois legislature are either too impotent or unconcerned to actually do something about restoring the people's rights. Now, you've heard a lot from us about gun shops and COVID. We've been fighting hard ourselves on a lot of these cases. Now, this is an interesting interaction, though. In Florida, a gun store has decided to establish a no-mask policy. The owner is concerned about masked bandits, but the natural result is increased risk of COVID exposure. Uh, I mean, this is just an interesting little side note, unless the state and other authorities get involved. I just think it's interesting to think about how we've been fighting these closure orders, and then now this happens. You know, what is the state going to have to say about that? Well, that's all I've got for you this week. Thanks for tuning in. If you'd like to know more, check out fpcnews.org, where you can find this week's edition and information on our legal and legislative efforts. If you think this content would be important to anyone you know, help us spread the word and tag them in the comments. If you want to join the fight with us, go to fpcaction.org and take action. If you think this work is important, you can support us there too. Every little bit makes a huge difference. As always, keep your eyes on Firearms Policy Coalition, where we're keeping up the fight for all of your rights all the time. I've been Matt LaRosier, and I'll see you real soon.